given on to the Spirit of Christ. To all that the protocol has already been given, and once again, the, the blessed and very appreciative to have our brothers and our sisters from the Eastern Star and Masonic Lodge. Amen. Amen. Despite of what title or what name that we are under, we all are sitting under the canopy of heaven. We have the Almighty God, the Grand Master of the Great Universe, where He was at. And He said, The agenda. He writes on the principles of life as what is required of all of us. And there we are to read and go work in the vineyard of the Lord. We are grateful to have our brothers, as I said earlier, and our sister celebrating St. John, John's Day. However, we didn't receive a special request to preach a St. John Day message. So, I just have a message. All right. Amen. Amen. And perhaps if you had a sent such a request, I would not have known how to do it. But if you plan to come another year, somebody from the from the organization it might take some time and maybe they can help me out and tell me what I thought to say on St. John's Day. So as it is, y'all forgive me if I do not talk about John the Baptist or John the Divine or the inner circle. Forgive me, but know that whatever I do say is a word from the Lord. You got a witness? It's the word from the Lord. And from the scripture you heard read in our hearing, John 13, I'm just going to read a few verses uh, for the setting of today's message. And that will be verses 31 and 38. And the verse read as this, when he was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. Right. Notice in that verse, even Jesus didn't do anything without God being a part of it. Yeah. If you don't remember anything else, remember that whatever we undertake, make sure that God is being glorified. Yeah. And Jesus said, that now even God will be glorified uh, in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I'm going, you cannot come. A new commandment, the command I give you, love one another. Uh, just help me out here a little bit. You just whisper to somebody sitting next to you and say, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciple. Amen. Not by the uniform that you wear, not by the choir that you sing, or the auxiliary that you participate in, but by your love. All men would know that you are my disciple. And if you love one another. Simon Peter asked him, the Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I'm going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Jesus asked, 
Lord, Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? Peter was something like my grandson. He liked to know all the why. And he would continue to ask, why? So, 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 so Jesus answered him and said, will you really lay down your life for me? I tell you the truth. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. <clears throat> Thus ends the reading of today's text. For a few minutes, I want to speak to you on the title, Have Love for One Another. Have Love for One Another. This morning's Sunday School lesson title, uh, I'm not going to ask you to show your hand how many of you were in Sunday School, but the title of it was Love as Loving as You Are Loved. Right. Loving as You Are Loved. Looking at those <clears throat> verses, it came to me that we must understand the content of that phrase, loving as you are loved. Some of us have been loved in a very hurtful way. Some of us, if you have been following the news, as Sandusky, others, uh, he would say that he was only showing love. This is not the type of love that Jesus has given us to fall. Some of us have hurtful love in our relationship. Some of you have experienced very hurtful relationship. Now, I'm not trying to get in nobody's business, but I'm telling what the Bible says. So just wake up and let's get through this over and I'll sit down shop and we'll, amen. amen. Because I know I'm saying, tell them the truth. Some of us have gone through, or is going through some very difficult time. Amen. We are facing some situations and we may ask ourselves, oh, if this, if this is what love is all about, Lord, get me out of this. But the Bible says, have love for one another. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, we find here, we will talk to you briefly on three points. <clears throat> the first of those three are, are you willing to follow Christ's example of service? Are you willing to follow Christ's example of love? Are you willing, are you just willing to follow Jesus? Can I get a witness? Amen. Are you going to talk back to me? Amen. I'm from the South Carolina, y'all. We have talk back. You know, I say something and anybody else in here from South Carolina? Amen. Amen. All right. Then we got enough just for y'all to say amen. And if y'all, brother, cousin Eddie, you from South Carolina, so you might hold your hand up. <laughs> I know exactly where you're from. <laughs> Amen. Just for a few minutes, brother. Just relax yourself. Just, right. Amen. I, I just want everybody to get in the mindset of right. Jesus. Yeah. Are you willing to follow Christ's example of service? Yeah. All right. John 13 through 17. It believes you all have occurred on the same day. That Jesus was talking to his disciples. He was teaching them, getting them ready for a service that they might perform. Jesus called them. First thing he did, after the Passover, after the supper, the Bible said that Jesus took off his garment, right. laid it aside. Yeah. Sometimes too, so too many of us are too high to be able to serve, uh, too high in our mind, uh, to exalted in our positions until we can't get down to serve. All right, all right. But I want you to watch Jesus. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he took off his garment uh -huh. and he placed a towel all right. around his waist. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the Bible said that he began to wash yeah. his disciples' feet. Now the blessed thing 
thing about that. We didn't have shoes and socks like we have today. Because uh, the dead, some of those <laughs> shoes <laughs> may not have been in the pleasant. But they had sandals. And, and it was a custom that whenever a visitor come into the house, the, the guest of the house will wash the dust from the feet. So Jesus given an example of his love. Yeah. Amen. Now, if I get that, if I, if I would pause here this morning and take off my shoe, who will be the first one to come up and wash my feet? You will? The rest of you are telling the truth. <laughs> I would come. I don't know if my wife would come. <laughs> but I want you to understand what the word is about. Jesus took off his garment and placed a tower as a slave. This is Jesus, y'all. This, 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 this is God in the flesh. This is the, this is the grand master of the universe because the word says in the beginning there was the word and the word was with God and the word was y'all might as well loosen up because I'm, uh, I'm going to be myself no. uh, the word was God you can't get no higher than that but he took off his garment took off his garment and he took a towel and began to wash the disciples' feet. Uh -huh. He began to wash their feet. Yeah. But, but as he began to wash their feet, it wasn't so much about washing their feet uh, 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 to make them feel important that Jesus washed my feet, but he was teaching them a lesson how to serve. Yes. Yes. All right. To many of us, we want to be the chief, but we don't have enough enemies. But I heard when the word of God says that the harvest is truly is great. But the laborers are few. We have a few that would take the time to tell somebody that God loves you. That God loves you so much, he died for you. He began to wash the disciples' feet. And as he washed the disciples' feet. Can you imagine Brother Peter and Brother Julius, who, who was there among the twelve? Glory to God. And uh, watch Jesus washing the disciples' feet. I want you to follow me here. Hallelujah. Huh? Can you imagine yourself going by doing something for somebody? And you know that they don't like you. You know that they just got through talking about you. You know that they just got through putting some stumbling blocks in your way. But here you go into the crowd, washing their feet. Washing their feet. Peter and Judith was in the crowd. Amen. Can you imagine what might have been in their mind? Number one, Judas knew that he had planned to sell Jesus out. You, you got some folks ready here right now, some other, that, that may be in your, in your household, just waiting to sell you out. Just, just waiting to sell you out. And, and, and they'll tell you that I love you. Yeah, yeah, the, the folk that watch those back. Thank you. So he's, he's, he's from the South, too. He don't mind talking about that. All right. Watch those back slapping love. Yeah. Watch, watch, watch those words that are used in saying, I love you. Right. They're, 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 they're three phrases of love. Amen. And people use love. So loosely. Uh, 
Sometimes men use love to a woman just to get their way. You don't have to hide. You can say amen. amen. Just uh, baby, I love you. Oh, your eyes are so beautiful. <laughs> baby, I'll swim the deepest ocean to get to you. And what makes it so bad, the dude can't swim. I love you now, I love you, I love you. <laughs> I love you. All types of words are used uh, to win over your affection. But Jesus set an example of what love is like. Love, love, love is in action. Love, not just word of you use to make somebody feel good. You do, you meet their need. Yes, yes. Meet their need. My wife have a little poem that she likes to share with us occasionally. And the poem goes about two little birds sitting on the limb. And one of the little sparrows reach over and tell the other sparrow says, I love you. I love you. I love you. And the little sparrow turned to the first sparrow and said, Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. If you love me, just let me step out of bounds for the little young lady tell the young man. Yeah. <laughs> 
When he was asked, did he know Jesus? Or was he a follower of Jesus? Jesus Peter said, no, I do not know the man. And they continued to pressure Peter. And Peter swore that he did not know the man. But I'm so glad. Not only did Jesus said, have love, but he came down through 40 and two generations to establish some love. Can you get a witness in here? Can anybody in here that willing to follow the service of Jesus Christ? So Jesus washed their feet. And Jesus told Peter that he'll wash human clean. But you are not clean yet. Hallelujah. He knows all about you. He knows our next move. He knows our next thought. But I'm so glad my God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. You may have a lie, but you don't have to perish. You may have been wrong, but the love of God is so great that if you seek forgiveness, he is willing to wash you from the grave. I heard Brother David when he had sinned with Bathsheba. He fell on the altar in the temple and he said, 